single sample Z test, when to apply it? What is the most appropriate experimental situation where you can apply single sample D Z test? We'll explain that. Also, how to collect data, how to analyze the data using Microsoft Excel and Minitab. Also, how to explain the results in the context of the problem in this video. Now, all this stuff that we're going to be talking about this video, it can be found in the openeducator.com under Design of Experiment Module 2 uh, Z test. So you can see it right here. Everything is explained here in written form. So a typical situation for this type of test is when the population standard deviation is known, the data is normality, normally distributed, and the sample size is reasonably high. Um, for example, let's say we want to test the height of U.S. male, whether you can Google this number and find out about 70 inches the height of U.S. male and about 3 inches standard deviation. I kind of rounded it for the easy explanation. Um, so we're going to test whether this is still valid. So this is an experimental situation where you can use a single sample z-test. Here is the data. So collect data simply. We are testing on U.S. male population. So you can collect a randomly selected few people and measure their height. And this is the data. So this data, I'll post a link, Excel document link right here somewhere for this data so that you can get this data file. You don't have to type it. So here is the data. Now this is the formula we use. In Excel, there is no automatic function to do that so we just have to so it will be very quick simply we calculate the average first and then um, standard deviation and mean is known for the population now I know there are 30 samples but sometimes for a huge data set we may not be able to know how many of them are there so you can simply use the count function to do that now the z value is simply x bar minus mu so x bar minus mu divide by i'm going to use another parenthesis to avoid any calculation mistake divide by sqrt square root of the sample size close the parenthesis for a square root also for the denominator uh, done and then we can simply type norms dist which will produce the probability value from the standard normal distribution and done and this is the one-sided p-value it will produce for both side p-value simply do multiply by two. Um, this is a whether it's one-sided or two-sided that is determined by the alternative hypothesis. So if the alternative hypothesis is two-sided in this case, we made a hypothesis not equal. So it's a two-sided hypothesis. Um, so we need two sample um, two-sided p-value. Let me show you how to do it in Minitab. Simply copy and paste here. Stat uh, basic statistics z-test. Then select the data. The standard deviation is three. Uh, we are testing a hypothesis that whether it's still it's 70 inches or not. Hit OK. The same p-value 0.543 we have got. So any statistical analysis, the inferential statistic, the final goal is to produce the p-value. Now, what is the p-value? P-value is the observed probability in the data for the null hypothesis to happen. So what is the probability for the null hypothesis? Now, if it's um, very low, if it's less than 5%, which is usually considered as the um, level of significant or set criteria, then we say, well, it is too low probability, it's not gonna happen. So in this case, it's very high, over 50%. So we say that we accept the null hypothesis because the probability value is higher than our set criteria, the p-value, 0.05. Uh, and the statistical interpretation would be uh, statistically the um, height of U.S. male is uh, 70 inches. The whole step-by-step -step process is explained in the openeducator.com right here. So you can read it or watch this video. Uh,